Well, one of the many things that I love about Southerners is their good manners. So I was shocked when a sociology professor at Ole Miss tweeted this, quote, don't just interrupt a senator's meal, y'all. Put your whole fingers in their salads. Take their appetizers and distribute them to the other diners. Bring boxes and take their food home with you on the way out. They don't deserve your civility, end quote. Now, unless he's trying to save conservatives from the obesity epidemic, that's not just uncivil, it's uncouth and unsanitary. And a good way to get someone to kick your asparagus is what that's all about. <laughs> well, <laughs> Ole Miss condemned his remarks saying, they don't represent the school's values. But don't let that y'all fool you. He's not the rarest of creatures, a rude southerner. He's from urban Kansas City. Now, he did his dissertation on comedy clubs as venues for radical politics. Sounds like a great way to waste your parents' tuition, the way that he's now wasting his own students' tuition. He teaches a class called Social Problems. Well, takes one to know one. So I hereby serve warning. If anyone sticks his fingers in my barbecue or redistributes my onion rings, I'm gonna stick a fork in you because I'm done tolerating this childish behavior. Keep your fingers out of my food, professor, or your fingers will end up unhinged just like your disposition. All in the sweet, sweet spirit that I will muster. Now, if I said J.B. Pritzker's toilets, most of you would think I'm promoting a plumber or a supply store. But if you're from the land of Lincoln, and I'm talking Illinois, you know that I'm talking about the Democrat candidate for governor. Why are his commodes a matter of public discussion? Well, candidate Pritzker is the heir to the Hyatt Hotel fortune and is worth $3.2 billion. Did I say billion? Yes, I did. $3.2 billion. But back in 2007, he thought of a way to save taxes. Mr. Pritzker had bought a second mansion next to the one that he already lived at in Chicago. He allowed his backup mansion to stay vacant and fall into bad shape. Several years later, the Cook County inspector discovered that Pritzker had removed all five toilets from the empty mansion so it could be classified as uninhabitable. In a tax appeal, he filed in order to avoid the taxes. Now, when the county assessor's office realized the Pritzkers could not go number one or number two, they lowered the 6,378 square foot mansion's assessed value from 6.3 million to about 1.1 million. What's the end result? Property tax refunds of $331,432.03 for the years between 2012 and 2016. Sounds like Mr. Pritzker cried wee wee all the way to the bank. <laughs> I'm sure I'm going to get some letters for that. <laughs> Go ahead and send them, it's fine. Well, the county inspector general declared that the county had been intentionally defrauded. Candidate Pritzker agreed to pay back the monies, but defended his decision as it followed the rules. Pritzker's opponent, incumbent Bruce Rauner, has been running ads calling his opponent the porcelain prince of tax avoidance. <laughs> Despite the billionaire's toilet removal, a Southern Illinois University poll shows that Pritzker is ahead by 22 points over Governor Rauner. No wonder from people from Illinois keep moving down here to Tennessee. No state taxes and no toilet bandit billionaires. I'm telling you, the whole story ought to be flushed from our memory. And from our post-nasal drip file, there is a $6.27 reward. Yep, that's right, $6.27. Uh, reward for information leading to the return of a stolen 50-pound nose sculpture in Oregon. No joke here. Someone actually stole a 50-pound nose. And someone had a 50-pound nose to steal. Actually makes you wonder why your nose runs and your feet smell. But I digress. The two-foot-high nose was stolen off the Albert family's front porch in Portland. That's the very same 50-pound nose sculpture that someone else had thrown away after last Halloween. Well, you know the old saying, one man's trash is another man's 50-pound mucus-making machine. <laughs> it's just something we thought was really funny and made us a part of Keep or Portland Weird, said 11-year-old Sarah Albert, as he told KGWTV.
The Alberts have been putting up missing 50-pound nose posters all over the neighborhood in hopes of seeing the return of their beloved nose. Sayer and his brother Albert are offering the $6.27 reward only because their mother nicks the idea of a $2,000 reward. And one more question. Why is a plastic surgeon's office the only place adults don't get mad when you pick your nose? <laughs> In other nostril-related news, a British woman has stormed the fashion world with a great new accessory, earmuffs for the nose. Sally Steele Jones is offering nose warmer in an array of styles for people who want nose warmth with a dash of flash. Steele Jones said she got the idea when her nose was genuinely cold one day. While her company started small, one style, she soon realized there were people and noses of all shapes and sizes that were just too nippy and needed a nuzzle. And thus, the nose warmer company was born. She said her website ships the nose warmers worldwide for a price of only about $10. Some people have said, even if you wear this with a runny nose, it's still very fashionable and practical. We say it's not. <laughs> now, I know what I'm buying my family for Christmas. How about you? Well, like a journalistic nuzzle to your incredibly inquisitive mind, we read the news so you don't have to.